Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Friends, please be seated. Today we celebrate the last Sunday of the church year. It is traditionally called Christ the King Sunday, where we gather and we celebrate the kingship of Jesus Christ. I can't help but to get a little tied up and tickled by Jesus' interactions with Pilate when he is revealed as king. Think back to when you were a child. Do you ever remember having somewhat smart mouth remarks for parents or teachers? <clears throat> what are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? And so it goes with Jesus and Pilate. What have you done? What do you think I've done? Can you imagine? Pilate is a powerful man, is he not? Pilate is the Roman governor of Judea. And as such, he has a lot of authority and broad freedom to do as he will with the people there. Things the Roman emperor really cares about. Taxes being collected. More importantly, taxes being sent back to Rome. Trade happening so that the taxes can be paid and sent back to Rome. And the peace being kept so that trade can happen, so that taxes can be paid and sent back to Rome. Mainly the emperor just cares about getting paid. Right? That's what's really important to him. He says, Pilate, you have at it. You just make sure that taxes get paid and sent back to Rome. Pilate kind of gets to figure it out how that's accomplished. In this, Pilate wants to keep the peace so that trade can happen, so that taxes can be collected and get sent back to Rome. It's very important to him. But the way he does it is the way he does it. If extra taxes were to happen to get collected and he got to keep some of that extra, so be it. If it meant someone had to die on the cross so that the peace could be kept, so taxes could be paid, so be it. Pilate has the power to condemn and the power to free. And so Jesus is there, calm and cool, not worried about Pilate's power at all. It's kind of like imagine you were sitting before a judge for a somewhat serious offense. And he says, well, what do you have to say for yourself? What do you think I was doing? And would anyone talk to the judge that way? Just needling him, trying to take him right up to the point of rage. And yet Jesus does that with Pilate. Isn't it weird the way he answers him? It's always struck me as so odd. Who do you say I am? Are you a king? Well, you say I'm a king. So you're going to say for yourself, Jesus? Nothing else? No defense about your actions at all. Why would Jesus be so calm? and cool in the presence of someone who had the power to crucify him or the power to set him free. Perhaps Jesus knew as he told Pilate, my kingdom is not from this world. I'm a different kind of king with a different kind of kingdom. Now if you think about normal kings, they're kind of powerful people, right? They more or less do what they want to do. If the stories about the Saudi Arabia crown prince are to be believed, they can even murder people in other countries and get away with it, right? Kings are powerful people. Governors, powerful people. But Pilate's power is limited because Pilate's power comes from the emperor. But even the emperor's power is limited. Sure, he can mess with people and do what he wants. But think back to King George III, the most powerful man in the world at the time, 
best navy and the best army in the richest country and empire until 1776 happened and a bunch of rednecks beat them. I mean, it seems funny, but I mean, basically that's what we were, right? We're just good country people making our way out on the frontier. We weren't a trained army, we didn't have fine weapons, we didn't have big warships. Kings are powerful people, but their power is limited. And then you have Jesus, a carpenter and traveling rabbi, king of kings, lord of lords, but a kingdom from a different world and a different sort of king. Perhaps Jesus was not afraid of Pilate because he understood that Pilate's power was impotent. Sure, Pilate could crucify him and kill him. But Jesus knew that the victory over the power of this world, the kind of power Pilate has, the kind of power kings and governors and presidents and armies have, was already defeated on the cross of Calvary by Jesus Christ. Jesus knew that that power was impotent because it had already lost. And so whether he was crucified or not didn't really matter. In fact, if Pilate were to round up all of his friends and crucify them too, it wouldn't really matter. Because in three days' time, Jesus was going to get out of that grave and ascend into heaven and rule his king forever. And he was coming back for his people. Now we are in the midst of a very joyous and a very hard week here at St. Michael's. On Wednesday, 450 people came into this very room to bury Tyler Gray Adams, a 33-year-old young man who died in a car crash. The same number of years as our Lord, and his life ended. For many, they would say this was a tragedy, that it's hopeless, that he had gone to his ruin and destruction. The foolish say this, for the wise know that he now rests in the Lord. It is a hard death, but Tyler Adams was baptized here in that font 33 years ago and received adoption as God's son forever. Forgiveness of his sins and entry into Jesus Christ's own otherworldly kingdom. You see, Tyler could be killed by a car crash But the good news is, is that the power of a car crash, like the power of Pilate, is impotent. Because that's not the end of the story. For he goes to be with Jesus. And today is a joyful day, because in the same font that Tyler was baptized in 33 years ago, Zara Ann will be baptized in, in just a few minutes. Do you know what's going to happen to her? She is going to receive adoption as God's daughter forever. She will be sealed in the Holy Spirit and marked as Jesus Christ's own forever. She will receive forgiveness of her sins and entry into Jesus' eternal kingdom. And like us, no matter what shall befall us in this life, be it Riches and wealth and comfort or hardship. The power of this world is impotent because Jesus Christ the King lives. And it is eternal kingship that we hope and make our stand. Amen. Amen.